This little guy has served in my shop faithfully and well for several years with no trouble. But boy, is it loud. Recently, I bought a shop load of tools from a man who was retiring. Included among them was an Ingersoll Rand 24-gallon air compressor. Hot dog. It had obviously seen a lot of use, so before I put it to work, I needed to refurbish it. This would involve changing the air filter and the oil, checking the belt for tightness and wear, testing for air leaks, and giving the whole thing a good cleaning. Changing the oil would involve first draining out the dirty oil. To do this, you remove the plug from the oil drain port and have something there to catch the dirty oil as it comes out. You can't just throw this oil away. It's an environmental contaminant. Poured out on the ground, it can get into your water source with unhappy results. Like used motor oil, you take this air compressor oil to your local auto supply where they take it off your hands for free and do God knows what with it. Here I'm tilting it to get the last little bit of oil out. Then we put the plug back in and put the new oil in it. As I was loading things out of the shop where I bought these tools, I found an Ingersoll Rand maintenance kit for the air compressor. This made me happy for a couple of reasons. One was that I would have the maintenance products Ingersoll Rand recommends, and the other was the fact that the maintenance kit was there meant that the previous owners had been taking proper care of the air compressor. With the old oil changed out, it was time to do the air filter. Here's why we need an air filter. Lots of dust got up in there. The air intake cover and the inner baffle both have intake holes in them. These need to be staggered 180 degrees from each other. And then the hole on the cover should be facing down when it's installed. The next step is to check the belt for wear and also to make sure that it has the proper tension. For the instructions on tensioning, I'll just read straight from the manual. Lay a straight edge across the top outer surface of the belt drive from pulley to sheave. At the center of the span perpendicular to the belt, apply pressure to the outer surface of the belt with a tension gauge. Force the belt to the deflection indicated in the table below. Compare the reading on the tension gauge to the table, and then in the table it says the deflection in inches should be 0.17. Minimum tension is 3 pounds, maximum tension is 6 pounds. Not having a tension gauge handy, I did it by eyeball and feel, and I decided to go ahead and clean it while I had the grill off. I would have blown it out with an air compressor, but I'd already sold the little guy, and of course the big guy wasn't hooked up. When I aired it up, I discovered that one of the liquid-filled valves had a leak and needed to be replaced. Somebody told me years ago that when you're using brass fittings, you don't need pipe dope or Teflon tape. This is not true. Don't believe it. And besides, what's it costing you to use it? Liquid-filled gauges are supposedly better than dry gauges, but the identical replacement for this gauge cost $65, so I went with a $10 dry gauge instead. To test for leaks, I put soapy water on all the joints and then watched to see if it blew bubbles. Everything was okay up here. 
but down underneath there was a problem. The drain valve leaks. I decided that instead of simply replacing the valve, I would use an L and an 8 inch nipple to bring it out from under the tank and make it easier to reach. But when I took this bushing out, I discovered that it was caked solid with dirt and rust. The inside of the tank needed to be cleaned. While I had it outside and had the water hose going, I gave it a good all-over bath. One thing that definitely needs to be cleaned is the fins on the air compressor. Those are what dissipate the heat and they can't do a good job of it if they're dirty. As you can imagine, I'm really happy to get this guy. He's going to be a valuable addition to the shop. And I've got a lot more refurbishment coming up in the days ahead, too. Stay tuned for videos on all of those because there's work cut out for me. See you soon.